how how addicted were you? You've told me, and I and you're very brutal in this book, brutally honest in this book. Tell people how addicted you are. Well, I mean, look, I, I've been shot, I've been stabbed, uh, I've been in more barroom brawls than I could think of. I I was in a car wreck where everybody died except for me. And, you know, I thought it was luck for the longest time. And then the last thing that happened to me was that I was, the night before George Bush was inaugurated, George W. Bush, I went to a biker bar in Southern Maryland, got very drunk, and tried to pick up a woman at the bar. And I had a feeling something behind me was, was, was somebody was behind me. I turned around, and her husband had a forty five caliber right in my face. And he pulled the trigger, and he hadn't chambered the bullet. And somebody grabbed it from behind, the next shot blew a three-foot hole in the ceiling. Uh, and they threw me into the parking lot, and uh, just before I passed out, I said, God, I, I don't believe in you, really, but if you do exist, uh, this is the last drink I'll ever have. And it was. That was 14 and a half years ago. I ended up, uh, I woke up at the psychiatric ward at George Washington University Hospital in the VIP room. And now only in Washington would you have a VIP room for nuts. Uh, but in any event... And by the way, it wasn't just alcohol. That was your... No, it was a cocaine. My, my two drugs were... My, my principal drug was alcohol, but cocaine was a great booster for it because it allowed me to drink a lot more. Uh, I didn't like anything down. I didn't like anything... You know, I didn't like marijuana. I didn't like any of that stuff. But but those two were what uh, were my drugs of choice. And, and uh, it, it, the night I quit, um, I had done about six grams of cocaine, I guess, and drank probably quarter to half of vodka. So, you know, any number of times I should have been gone. And so I thought, aren't you a lucky guy? Well, it, it occurred to me that there might be more to it than that. And that's when my beginning of my journey of faith uh, occurred. And, I, and I'm and i still on it. But uh, I believe without question that God's mercy kept me alive. And every day for me is a free one, as long as I keep my spiritual condition in shape. And I, and I should have been here. So I think he wanted to keep me around to work with alcoholics and drug addicts, and uh, which I do, uh, and I do interventions. And uh, so, so you've been doing you've been doing this for years, because yeah. I know. And I'd say, Bob, uh, you want to get a bite to eat? No, I can't. I got to go. I'm doing an intervention, or I'm, or I'm I'm running an AA meeting, or whatever you do. And so that has you, you, it's really also a story of redemption. And that is how you changed your life around and how you were so heavily addicted. You eventually went out to Hazleton and, and they got you clean and sober. And, and eventually you started helping other people out. And, uh, you know, I remember some stories you told me. You said you once went on the Today Show and that after the show, you had no idea what you said. You yeah, didn't even really remember you had been out on an all night bender. Yeah, I was. I was. It was Ed Rollins, who was Reagan's campaign manager, and I was Bondale's campaign manager. We used to do a segment every every Wednesday, and I. And one of the chapters of the book, I think, says, "Ed, what did I say in there?" Because I had I walked off the set, and I had no idea what I'd said. Absolutely done. And uh, that's, that's scary. Said, it's so, like, and you once told me you'd get up in the morning and you'd look at your car. Yes. To make sure morning. no blood was on the car. Right. And every you didn't morning. kill anybody. No, I didn't, fortunately, but, you know, it, it, it only would have been a matter of a second or a foot one way or another. And, that, and that's what the miracle of redemption and God's grace is. 